To see views like these, we must travel clear across the Pacific Ocean. traveling up the Saigon River, the old way of life blending with the new and modern. Now we are in the city of Saigon, capital of South Vietnam. Everything is seemingly calm, outwardly inviting. And Americans are invited and welcomed. But this could happen to our welcome anywhere in the Pacific. However, we have the wherewithal to put out such fires. Our United States Army Pacific. These waters run deep, but they are far from still. They churn with memories of great battles, memories of devastation stretching for thousands of miles across a watery globe. This is the Pacific Ocean. So deep are these memories that the United States has committed itself to the resolution that never again will it permit the shadows of treachery to darken man's lifeline to freedom. Symbol of Southeast Asia determination is to be found in Thailand, in the capital of Bangkok, headquarters of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, CETO. Here, eight nations have joined together to defend themselves against the threat of communist aggression. The policy laid down by its members is a strong defense, but to meet force with force when necessary. Such a policy requires United States military support, and we are giving that. This is Hawaii, our 50th state, command post for all operations in the Pacific Ocean area. The base of operations for the Army is Fort Shafter on the outskirts of Honolulu. For the Navy, base of operations is Pearl Harbor, scene of the Great Deception. Hickam Field, base of operations for the Air Force. Even in the skies, memory runs deep. It is recalled that the attack on Pearl Harbor was made with 355 planes and six carriers. While the Pacific Command tells the story of our strength and determination, the United States Army USARPAC has its own story to tell. 
personal contact with top military officials, as represented here by General Maxwell D. Taylor, emphasizes the responsibility of the United States Army Pacific. At Fort Shafter, major planning and policy decisions concerning the United States Army are made. But so great are the distances in the Pacific that operational responsibilities are decentralized into major subcommands. These subcommands reach out across 12 million square miles of ocean, stretching from Hawaii to Japan, to Korea, Okinawa, Taiwan, the Philippines. Stationed at these crucial points are thousands of our soldiers, either with military missions in an advisory capacity or as combat troops ready for any emergency. In Japan, our mission is to advise, to help build a strong military arm within the framework of the country's constitution. Yes, modern military methods are the order of the day for Japan's new crop of soldiers. But there is in Japan today a growing awareness that freedom must be defended. In keeping with this concept, a mutual defense assistance pact has been signed by our two governments. This joint United States-Japanese airborne exercise shows how an exchange of ideas, in this instance military ideas, can produce a mutual respect, a vital element in collective security. Field maneuvers, American style. The payoff, a skillful and self-sufficient ally. Off for winter maneuvers, also American style. Scenes such as we see here reflect our Army's efforts to turn bamboo defenses in the Pacific into a ring of steel. A giant step across the Sea of Japan to Korea is USAR PAC's strong right arm, 8th U.S. Army. These soldiers, along with the forces of the Republic of Korea, help make up the United Nations Command. It is relatively quiet these days along the 135-mile demilitarized border separating South Korea from communist-held North Korea. But our soldiers know and feel firsthand the tensions and pressures of communist aggression. This was South Korea in the wake of war. Whole cities decimated. Korea, where memories of aggression are truly deep. Our army helps to rebuild South Korea, restore it to hope for the future.
Yes, U.S. Army Pacific is much more than a combat force. Wherever its units are stationed, they contribute to the national economy. And to the spirit of freedom. Fifteen hundred miles from the trouble spots of Southeast Asia is another of USARPAC's subcommands, with headquarters in Okinawa. Gateway to the Far East. Okinawa is one of our major bases in Asia. Okinawa, where memories of a three-month battle are stark and grim. The toll of dead read 12,500 Americans. And a great news reporter. This is Okinawa today, reborn in the spirit of freedom. With the aid of our army in the Pacific, the islands of the Ryukyus are establishing a modern economy. Our president has stated that he recognizes the Ryukyus to be part of Japan, and that he looks forward to the day when the security interests of the free world permit its return. Right now, the Ryukyuans are fully aware of the immense contribution their islands are making in maintaining the peace of Asia. Such is Okinawa's strategic location that an airborne operation can be launched without delay against an aggressor. Okinawa, keystone of our defenses in the Pacific. Over in Hawaii, almost at the very doorstep of USARPAC's headquarters, memories of aggression run deepest. But a comforting thought is the presence of the 25th Infantry Division, Tropic Lightning, a nickname that goes back to the Pacific campaigns in World War II, to the famed battles of Guadalcanal and New Georgia. recalls how the 25th struck with lightning force. Talk about jungle warfare, it was hell, but they became experts.
Then came Korea. Here, the 25th earned 14 medals of honor and two Republic of Korea presidential citations. Its history is legend. Its mission today, to be in a battle-ready state as a strategic reserve. The Pacific is a vast maneuver area for testing new battle concepts. This is Operation Hailstorm, a war game held early February 1962. Place, Korea. Does it look real? Well, it is real, except that the aggressor is make-believe. The exercise plan assumed that aggressor forces staged an attack against United Nations forces. This exercise involved more than 75,000 Americans, Koreans, Turkish, and Thailand troops. Lasting four days, it was one of the largest maneuvers ever to take place in the Republic of Korea. These scenes tell a story of combat readiness more vividly, more graphically than words. But a few words are appropriate. As elements of USAR PAC's fighting units move through towns and villages today, there is no question of the United States' determination to meet force with force. And this gives comfort to those who recall the fateful period of the Korean conflict. Twenty-four million square miles of the Pacific have become a sprawling testing ground for new weapons and training techniques. If it's guerrilla-type battle, the Tropic Lightning Men have the answers. Remember Guadalcanal? Of course, then there wasn't the helicopter, that ace of many military trades. Training is rugged. Terrain is rugged. The type a soldier might encounter in fending off all types of brush fire war. Ironically, it is the American soldier who today is training the nationals of Southeast Asia in the art of jungle warfare. A slip of the foot could spell, but it didn't. Providing additional teeth to United States determination in the Pacific are the Army's missile bases in Hawaii, Korea, and elsewhere. From such bases, USAR PAC can hurl ground-to-air missiles equipped with nuclear warheads if necessary.
and suppose there is an atomic attack against our forces. This exercise shows how medics are prepared to handle the wounded. Our role as advisor to friendly governments in the Pacific has taken us to within a short distance of the Chinese mainland, an area of conflict and irritation sparked by the Reds. Taiwan, island home and fortress of the Republic of China. Many of the Chinese soldiers on Taiwan, officers and enlisted men, have received training in Korea, Okinawa, Hawaii, and the Philippines. the Pacific Command integrated scattered battle stations, the Army masterminds a worldwide communications network. Its name, STARCOM, Strategic Army Communications. This Taiwan station is a one and a half million dollar operation. Another Taiwan station nears completion, showing 60-foot antennas built to withstand winds up to 125 miles per hour. Wherever the Army goes, Starcom goes along with it. It all adds up to one thing. Communications is a vital link in our Pacific lifeline. Thousands of antennas of varying shapes and sizes help carry out a round-the-clock watch on this lifeline. To have a military mission is one thing, to sustain it another. Part of our logistical mission is to provide our Pacific allies with facilities for the repair and rehabilitation of equipment. As usual, civilians play a big part in this type operation. The Army in the Pacific employs approximately 100,000 civilians, of which 90% are foreign nationals. These are located principally in Japan, Okinawa, Korea, and Hawaii. If the operation is airborne, Parachutes must be made as battle-ready as troops. Supply is geared to USARPAC's demands. Destination, Republic of China. Thailand. Cambodia. Vietnam. Korea. The Philippines. Millions of tons of military supplies and equipment now go to harbors once known only in romance and legend, but which are now known in daily headlines as pressure points of communist aggression.
military hardware. From mortars to missiles, the means to survive and fight back. Off to a missile base. Delivery of supplies is often a monumental task. It's almost impossible to depend on conventional delivery systems. For routes of travel are dense jungle, steep bridges, roads that exist in name only. This, then, is the story of USARPAC. The arrow in its insignia represents strength and valor, and the stars, locations of the Pacific Ocean areas. With this insignia, USARPAC is stamped with an unalterable mission. It is a strong army, a modern army. It knows it is here to stay, to focus an ever watchful eye on the danger areas of the Pacific, to serve with its sister services and those of our allies, to preserve our lifeline. 